You know, man, eh? Black Coffee I was hungry when he made this song. I miss the old Black Coffee. Black Coffee and Zix Wanduni was such a great deal. Like, there was, there, there was such a great deal until Zix Wanduni released Clap Your Hands. That was like, yeah, I was uncalled for. Yeah, it's just jokes, guys. Just jokes. Don't type me. But anyway, you know how we do it this side. Welcome back to Switch South Africa. I'm Nicky Nash, as always. And today, you joined me in a car that I actually never liked. But after driving it and having it on test, it's a car I really like. Question is, would I buy it? You join me inside the Range Rover Vela Autobiography. So Autobiography, you know, it's a top of the range um, kit. So this car's kitted out, like it looks very beautiful. So you know I'm gonna do it this time. I'm gonna tell you about the extra look of the vehicle, internal look of the vehicle, and the overall drive, cost of ownership, because this car is quite pricey. And then you guys will tell me if you would buy it. But yeah, let's get right into it. So speaking about the extra look of the vehicle, this car looks beautiful. This specific one because it's sitting on 22 inch alloy wheels and they are massive. So this car is not that big, but with these wheels, ugh, it sits, the stance. I mean, when you air out the, the air suspension to access mode, because it's access, normal and off-road. When you put it on, on access, ugh, the car just sits like it sits so good. So it looks good. I really do like this vehicle. Um, where I don't like this car is the rear. I've never liked the Vela from the rear. I feel like Range, um, Land Rover Range Rover, like they were designing, right? Design the side, the front, the interior. Then they're like, oh, shucks, we need to do the back. And then they went to the back and like, okay, let's just put lights, right, Range Rover and call it a day. That's my personal opinion with this specific vehicle. So I don't like the look of the vehicle at the back. Um, maybe you guys do like it, but I personally don't like the look of the vehicle at the back. That's why I always reverse park. Well, I reverse park anyway, but this vehicle would want you to reverse park so that when you walk up to it you greet it by this lovely beautiful front grill it's so imposing like i love love the look of this vehicle then you get into the interior of the vehicle so because this is a facelifted model it gets the niceties that the new um range Rover products get so like it so like the range of a sport that we had last year is essentially this like when i'm sitting in here it feels like i'm sitting in the range over sport like I'm saying I'm saying like a big body like it looks very beautiful so you get a digital instrument cluster which has everything you need and you can customize it to see the map to see your music to see your fuel efficiency all those type of things and you get those floating um, design floating touchscreen infotainment system which supports Android Auto and Apple CarPlay wirelessly that's a good thing the thing that I'm not really a fan of is the fact that they removed the so you used to underneath the infotainment system you used to get this the controls that were here, like a heated seat, your climate control, that was right underneath here. You guys, I'll try to look for an overplay video from the range of a sport. I think it's like that. Now on this one, they removed all of that. So where is the climate control in the infotainment system? And you guys know how I feel about climate control in the infotainment system. I don't like it, but in this vehicle, it works efficient enough. Like you press, everything is there. Um, you can get to to cold, low temperature very quickly, high temperature very quickly without having to faff around too much. So I feel like if you get, if it's your vehicle, you get used to it and know that my vehicle works like this. So, not really too mad at it. And then the seats here in front is amazing. Like, they feel so good. So, they are heated and ventilated seats. Um, yeah, and you have memory seats 1, 2, and 3 for the driver. No memory seats for the passenger. But the seats do feel good. When you move on to the back seats, there's enough space. Decent leg room. Um, and the headroom is fine. Considering that this one has the glass sliding panoramic sunroof, it makes the interior cabin look so much better and feel so so much more premium and the, you know the build quality in here is amazing it makes sense why this car has x amount of money you will heal you don't try it i'll tell you the price the price of the car then the boot capacity for the person buying this vehicle the boot is decent enough i don't think you'll need a bigger boot for what you'd be doing even if you loaded with four people in this vehicle and road trip you won't need a bigger boot so in terms of the interior and practicality of the vehicle perfect um i've lived with the vehicle for six days now and i've enjoyed every single time i've had it and i've been filling it up actually with the boot because i've been traveling quite quite a lot in the past couple of days so you should be seeing that on the previous videos or something like that but yeah now when you go to the drive of the vehicle so this is where it gets very interesting so i know in fleets right so you have a fleet then they give you certain cars so i knew that there was a range rover um hybrid that's the one Mr. How Much reviewed. So I thought I'd getting that one, right? So I was not really, I'm not really, I was not really excited much because I've ha I've lived with a hybrid before, and I've always wanted to live with the with the diesel engine from um, Land Rover. And then, oh, 
got this lovely I, I i just see that i'm getting a different unit so this one is fitted with the with the v6 diesel and you know what for doubt missing This, this this engine remember if you watch my land rover defender video you hear me saying i wish it had a diesel give me this diesel engine in the land rover defender i'll take the land rover defender over every single thing i think so this one this, this car has a, a v6 diesel through an eight speed automatic gearbox the power that you're looking at is 221 kilowatts and 650 newton meters of torque so that amount of power and something that doesn't weigh as heavy as like a plug-in hybrid because of all the batteries this car goes like you put your foot down the car goes and it sounds it sounds very good when it is going but obviously if you if, you, if you're tracking it you will chow the diesel you understand but if you drive it properly it'll be perfect so you're looking at the fuel efficiency here um i did an economy run because i was from the airport today earlier on so from the airport to where i stay is 60 k's exactly 60 k's so i I put the car in eco and then I keep kept the cruise control at 110 the whole way from the airport to the I got home so 60 k's. Then I averaged a 4.8 and then obviously while I was taking the video it was idling, so the numbers just kept increasing. So all, on the overplay videos you'll see it say 5.0 or 5.1, something like that. But overall it was 4.8 and that's quite impressive, you know. Um the fact that this diesel engine can give you the performance. And when it's time to be efficient, you can give you the efficiency as well. So I really do like the engine in this vehicle. And it's what made me love this vehicle. Up, aside from the looks and fun, just driving the vehicle and being inside the vehicle. I just, I just honestly loved, loved this vehicle. So like right now, I'm in eco by the way. Put your foot down. Oh, it sounds so good. Oh, I could do this. Well, I've been doing this for the past six days anyway. So... And I could keep doing it for the next year or so. So the, the engine is something to speak about a lot. So, but overall, the drive of the vehicle is quite good. Um, over speed humps and over road imperfections, it's a nice, floaty, comfortable um, ride over. And that's because this car has air suspension. So a vehicle that has air suspension, you feel it's floaty. It's like a, I can't describe it, man, but like it's very floaty. You can feel a car that has air suspension, a car that doesn't have air suspension. Air suspension helps so, so well, so it feels very floaty. I like it and has made me love this vehicle overall. So the air suspension, there's three, there's three modes, right? So there's the axis, which is like your entry, like it's sitting at its lowest, but you, you can only drive that until maybe like 20 Ks and then it'll, it'll raise up to normal. Normal is your everyday driving. And then this off-road, if, if you just want a bit more ground, ground clearance and you, if, let's just say you're off-roading and all those type of things, you put it onto the, the off-road setting. Um, so that's what goes to the air suspension. I think you can you can spec. So I think air suspension is also uh, an option. I'm, I'm, not, I'm not too sure. I'm not too sure. I don't think all Velars have air suspension. So if you are buying a Velar, please do spec the air suspension. You will you'll thank me later. It's a, very, it's a very nice feeling. So the price of the vehicle this is where it gets interesting and I'll, I'll and i'll make you understand why i say this is where it gets interesting so the price of this villa starting price you are looking at wait for it two million rand starting price for this range rover villa starting price this specific one because it's the autobiography and it's um it's it's, it's optioned out with a couple of things so you get um the color the wheels all those type of things a bit of extra features you're looking at 2.1 million just over 2.1 million so oh, that's a lot of money guys for a range rover Velar. and it, it it's, it's very expensive for me i feel like it's it's quite expensive because at 2.1 million rand you're playing around so many vehicles and before even looking at your know, in the same house you're playing around so many vehicles there's GLEs in that, amount, in, that, in that price range, there's Volvo XC90s, there's X5s, there's all sorts of vehicles in that price range, right? So obviously you guys can decide which one you want to go for. But here's what I have to say. There is so many vehicles in that price range, but there is also a vehicle in that price range where this car comes from. The car I had like a, a month or two ago, the Land Rover yeah, Land Rover Defender 110 outbound. The exact same one that I had was the exact same price as this thing. And that is more spacious, bigger, has more features. Yeah, yeah, yeah it has more. Yeah. yeah, features are the same actually, but it's bigger, more spacious, and it looks better. Like the Defender just looks. The only disadvantage about the Defender is that, you know, after a couple of years, one eye will, will, 
will die. You, if you look at defenders on the road, you'll see that one eye, or majority of them, if the car like three, four years old, you see that the eye, is, the LED lights are switched off on one side. So they need to work on that. But overall, I'd get the defender for that amount of money. So I feel like this car shouldn't exist because it's too close to defender money. Well, it's defender money. And it's also way too close to a Range Rover Sport, for example. So if you get a, if you're looking at the specific villa, you can just save up a bit and get into a range of a sport, which is bigger and better. So it, it, it makes you wonder, do you really want a villa? And I was asking myself this question and I'm like, actually, you don't really need a villa, but someone that goes and looks at a villa, someone that goes and buys a villa, just wants a villa. They not they don't care what you're gonna say to them. You can tell them, no, a defender is this, a range of a sport is this, a GLE, an X5. They don't care about what you're gonna say. They left the house and went and said, I'm going to buy a Land Ro uh, Range Rover um, Vela. That's, that's, that's just that, honestly. Because it, uh, personally, I don't see why you spend 2.1 million rand on a Vela when there's so many other vehicles. Unless you're going for this engine. <laughs> so if you take the amount, this specific unit, if you take this car and you go to the Change Cars Vehicle, um, vehicle Finance Calculator, and you finance this vehicle over a period of five years, which is 16 months, at an interest rate of 12.25%, with no balloon payment, no deposit. You're looking at paying 48,300 rand. It's a lot of money. It's a lot of money. And I'm gonna end it there. I'm not gonna say anything else. I'm gonna end it there. You guys in the comments will tell me whether um, you'd pay this amount of money. And quickly, there's this. So yeah, you guys will tell me if you guys will pay this amount of money for this vehicle. I personally would not sort out for the Defender, but I'm ending it there. I'm not, I'm not saying anything else. I'm ending it there. You guys will tell me where you get, where you buy. And also, big shout out to every one of you that's watching this, this review. I appreciate you all. Um, we had 18,000. I don't know. Yeah, we had 18,000. I appreciate all of you guys that are subscribed. I appreciate all of you guys that actually see me on the road and actually greet me. So before shooting this video, I was parked. And there's this guy that stopped and said, Is that YouTuber, right? So it's just South Africa. I'm like, Yes. Yeah. So it's nice to when someone notices you and sees the good you're doing. So I appreciate every single one of you guys that are watching this video. I'm going to put this part in the beginning of the video and then the end of the video. Like, I appreciate every single, single, single one of you. All 18,500 and something of you guys. I appreciate you guys. Even those that are not subscribed, I appreciate you guys. But yeah, I've said a mouthful of this vehicle. I hope to see you on the next review. And yeah, I'm Nicky Nash from Sujas Hatafeka. I'm proud of Creation and Change Cars. I'm signing out.